Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. I spent yesterday going to estate sales uh, with somebody else. I took someone along, kind of showing them ropes. I scored out across the board on these lots of small stuff, lots of stuff that most people just don't mess with. The majority of the high dollar stuff are small. So let's just get right into it. Let me show you one of the neater items here. Now, I don't know how many people would know what these are, but um, Permite, these are exhaust valves for 1930s cars. They're brand new. They're still in the package. Around here, this stuff shows up at estate sales quite often. The Motor City's right here. A lot of factories in my town as well. This is from Ohio. Uh, something like this. I paid $2 for this. They had a clue what it was. This is like 100 150 bucks. Brand spanking new. Goes to a 30s car. The box is literally silk screened. Really nice. It's got a date to the 30s. I'll have to track down what that means, um, but other than that, um, I've got some money in here for sure, no doubt about it. Now, for those in Patreon, I showed you some stamps. This is one of the things I got out of the stamp box that I showed on the last live haul. This is not what's in this. Again, always look at the inside of the book. Never trust what it says on the book. And Most people might have just thought that this is a book but let's just say it's not. This is going to be hauled out and called out in Patreon, and I'm going to talk about stuff in this book um, for one of the videos that I got coming up really quickly here, too. We're going to go over a whole box of stamp stuff in Patreon just to kind of help everybody out there, but real nice item here. Now, this is Fontanini. This is a Italian. These are Christmas. These are five-inch manger scene figures. Now, the 5-inch are usually the hottest ones to get. I spent $2 on this. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have already seen these, at least a couple of them in the video. Uh, there's like 14 or 15 characters here. Now, Aaron, one of my subscribers, asked about the baby Jesus being the most expensive one. It's not. Just FYI. Some of the otter figures are the ones that are usually worth more money. Some of these are limited edition and were extra add-ons for the manger scene. You've got Mary... I'm pretty sure, yeah, this would be Joseph right there. Obviously, we've got baby Jesus, barn animals, the whole works. The three wise men are in here also, which are this one, this one, and this one. This set right here for my $2 investment on all of these that I'm showing you, without the manger itself, I should get 65 bucks or better for it. This is something I find all the time. The one thing you always want to do, let's see how well this is going to show up here. Look at the bottom of these. That's how they're all marked. They all have that Italy mark on the bottom of them. I always, always, always look for that on the bottom. It's the best mark you could find on these. These are plastic. Um, there's some paper mache versions of these, and these come in like five different sizes. There's a tall one that's about 12 inches tall that's usually paper mache. Some of those figures can go for 65 to 150 a piece. These Fontanini goes for a ton of money. They're almost always marked Italy. Sometimes they have the company name or some kind of logo that I've seen on some of them, too. Let's get some of the Christmas items out of here, too, first. Now, one of the sales had scrapbooking. Those are the ones I always go to if it says estate sale. The people who run estate sales don't know the difference between old scrapbooking stuff and new scrapbooking stuff when they're loose. I picked up some incredible Santa Claus die cuts from about 1870. I'm putting $500. I've got two of these. In fact, where's the other one? These usually came in a set. They would have been on a sheet, stuck together, something like that. Well, chances are they would have been like this. That's usually what you find. So if you find one, usually look around, and the other one's bound to be there. I spent 250 on about 30 of these, different, all different, all Christmas. Um, all considered just scrap for modern-day scrapbookers. This is 100%, without a doubt, the vintage, never used, never damaged, original um, Santa Claus is from 1870. 500 apiece is what I'm putting on these. Not an exaggerated listing. I sold one a little bigger than this with mica. It was probably about two more inches. I got 750 for each of those. So Santa Claus stuff from this age is almost impossible to find. Now, if you've followed my store, you've looked on my eBay store, 
I show things like this too. I've got about four of this exact same one. I get around 125 bucks or better on each one of these minimum. I usually put 250 or higher on these. These are the biggest version of these that they made. This would have come in a sheet with a bunch of little ones probably around it to fill in the space. Again, 125 minimum. Now here's another really nice one. Again, if you saw my Instagram, I showed some of these on my Instagram feed as well. This is a really nice one here. I don't know if you can see the the delicate holes inside of this thing here, but it's well die cut. It's just an incredible piece. I sold one smaller than this, around a hundred bucks or so. This one I should at least get, say, one fifty or better out of this one here. These would have hung. These are decorations that they would have hung around in a Victorian home back in the day. Here's another one. This is a really nice snowman one. One fifty or better on this one. The size of these is just incredibly huge for something like that. Let's go into some paper since we're already got the paper stuff out. Magic. This is a 1905 Wizard magazine. Um, it's an index for it, but inside of it is a supplement for the Magician's Council, Council Magic Circle, 1905-06. This is the complete piece here. I'm guessing 50 or 60 bucks. I paid a dollar for a stack. This little packet here, literally a dollar for all of this. I'm going to show you some of the other stuff. Now, this thing here is just an index, but I figure I can still get 10 or 15 bucks out of this right here, this one little pamphlet. It's an index to a magazine that's almost impossible to get, and this is the index for Volume 1, Issue 1, the very first issue. So that one might be good as well. Now, I've had other things from some of these people, too. This is a handbill, literally. Not only is it a handbill, but there's a ticket from the guy as well. Not only is there a ticket, but he signed it on the back, too. So autograph, location of where this was at, um, and then a ticket as well, too. So that's really interesting. Magician. Uh, for my dollar, this thing right here, I'm probably going to put like 150 on the ticket and the handbill. Maybe a little higher. This, as I said, maybe 5750 on these two things here. On top of that, Lee Chung So. This is a magician who's going by a Chinese name. I don't think he's Chinese um, because there's an actual picture of him. This is an advertising card, probably by the phone number on the back, circa 1930s or so. I'm guessing this might be worth, say, 100 bucks, maybe a little more, because if he is Chinese anyway... Uh, really nice examples here. This one's got a 1951 date on it. I would say this is much earlier. You can tell by the, the quality condition. He looks older in this one as well, too. So 5750 minimum for this one. And then probably, as I said, like one something, 150 maybe. I don't know. I I'm going to get a couple hundred bucks for these magic pieces, without a doubt, in my opinion. I sell paper everything. And, you know, I've come across stuff like this. I've shown you paper magic related to in the past so it's always good stuff to find now i get books like this i've had this same one a couple of times never had i had one with autographs in it but right up on the top there's um several different autographs now i'm gonna have to track down one says old dad um pat wade there's quite a few names on here but there's names throughout it and inside of it again i called out some of these on my instagram page wanda jackson original from her fan club autographed by her and then autographed by another country western star sneaky pete bill monroe legend in the bluegrass industry autographed provenance where it was and it goes with this book gives you the exact location time and date which matches up in this book here's uh, bill moss another um bluegrass performer back from the day and then there's a bunch, Kitty Wells, a bunch of other people have signed the book as well. So, I mean, and I'm sure these are real autographs. They got them in person for the most part, I would say. Right, let me show you the Bill Monroe so you can just see. It's it's written in hand. There's no doubt about it. It's smeared. He's got parts where he's picked up on it. The whole work. Same with the, the Wanda Jackson. Let me show that a little closer there for you, just so you can see. I don't doubt a minute that that's an original um, the machines do it on the front. This just looks so well done, and it matches everything that I've seen online. Again, there's many different ones in here. There's Johnny and Jack, even, which is a rockabilly uh, star. They did a lot of decent rockabilly songs. I think Over the Mountain was one of the ones that they were more popular with. 
both signed it. There's probably 27, I think I counted, autographs in here. Many nice ones in here. Well worth the 25 bucks I paid for it. The Bill Monroe one alone is probably worth 50. So once I figure out who everybody is, I may sell it as a lot. I probably put five or six hundred dollars on this as a lot. Again, all 27 autographs. Or I might put the book as one lot for four or five and then sell the individual 8x10 photos separately. Still up in the air on this one. Altogether, I've spent with the die cuts and all, I've got around 375 bucks spent on everything you see here today. My return, and this is not an exaggerated figure, if you know what giant Christmas die cuts and, and decorations from the 1870s go for right there is over $3,500 in what I got there. So I'm looking at at least six grand from this one here. Everything isn't high price, but the Victorian die cut decorations are all my money right there. I got a bunch of other stuff here too. Let's just show you a, some of the smaller stuff here. Hot Wheels. I do buy Hot Wheels. This is an excellent condition. Let's see if we can show it to you there. It's in Hong Kong. It's not worth a fortune, but I buy a bunch of these. This was a quarter. All their works, rolls. Real nice condition, honestly. But with that, I also got this. Most people might not know what this is. This is an HO scale slot car for lighted cars. This is the lighting fixture. A light bulb would go in there and shine the light off the end. This is probably about circa 1978 to 82. Um, it's not a T-Jet, but it's probably like a Tyco vintage. And again, another quarter, no damage. Usually these are damaged. This is probably 15 or 20 bucks minimum, I would gather. It's a Z28. Nice decal sticker work, original vintage piece there. So another quarter out of that one. Buckles and stuff I always look for. Now, this one may not look like much to somebody else. This is an 1870s, maybe even a little earlier, sash buckle very very finely cast this is a cast one um something like this i paid a dollar for it and this in a bag now i don't know if they go together but either way this is a slide victorian as well 1870s or 80s i'd say i'd get at least 15 or 20 for that and this one here again i paid a dollar for both of these this one here i'm going to put 57 or higher on it and just take whatever this could date back to the civil war it's got some really nice characteristics on it so that's another good piece there now let's get this in the right direction. Early poker chip. Uh, Age-wise, it's kind of hard to tell on this one. This one could date to the 1890s or so, all the way up to 1920s. Navy, this would go in the military section. I, I would pretty much guarantee you I'm going to get, say, 10 or 15 bucks for this. It's clay. I paid another quarter. They have quarter bins at places like this. The stuff that just they don't think is going to be worth much. This I paid a dollar for. Now, it's not marked, but it's an excellent piece. I've had a couple of these other ones similar to this with different uh, clips on the back. Uh, it makes a little jingly sound, too, which was kind of interesting. It's solid. It's definitely silver plate. It could be sterling, but I really, really doubt it. I'm not even going to mess with this one. I figure 20 bucks or so uh, this year for Christmas. I'll sell it. Let's see, where should I go from there? Um, I got some records, too, to show you. Here's a miniature lighter. Let's see if we can get it in focus there. It still does work. It, it doesn't spark, but it does turn. So it's a usable lighter, like a Zippo, vintage Zippo. Um, I should do very well. It's marked Japan. Um, in fact, I've got a loop here. Let's see what it's actually marked all the way across. Uh, yeah, Japan on one side, and it's got a company name. Empress, that's a good 50s name, maybe a little earlier than that. It's a charm too, it's got a little hook up there for it, so that's a nice piece. 40 bucks maybe I might get out of that. Now around here I find stuff from some of the plants that made planes and jeeps and all kinds of stuff like that. All the factories were up here for a very long time. These always go very well for me. Uh, let's see if we can get it up there and focus a little better. This is a Corsair pen employee promotional giveaway. It's a tie tack. Again, another dollar piece here, 20 bucks, 30 bucks maybe. Now this here, I believe is honest to God coral. It's not worth a fortune, but it's early. It has a gold filled, uh, let's see if you can see it there. Gold filled, um, it's got a gold filled, uh, chain attachment clasp for it 
it feels right it's got the sound I might take this into the jeweler because I got some gold too as well so we're going to be going back to Ed's to do another video with him casting jewelry uh, start to finish so we're going to get to see his eBay business too so this one here I paid two dollars for I took a chance it really I really think this is the real deal here coral's not extremely expensive but I'll still make being real coral 40 or so bucks off of this one here's another one art deco piece here it's missing a few stones I'll pop them in there two bucks again it's about average what I pay for these junky style ones here art deco though this one will probably get me in fact you can see the stones missing I'm probably gonna make geez 30 bucks easy I'll be able to blow this out I have missing cabochon uh, stones for some of these two that I think would be the right size now this is also this is all gold filled here so I'm gonna take this in and scrap this hopefully you can see all that stuff there bracelet uh, there's some watch chains and things like that now it's got a bunch of stuff this is literally from two estate sales I use these bags you've seen them before I thought I had a gold ring here but um, I saw the GF after I bought it but for the price I paid I'm gonna get some good money out of it there's not a, a huge value in gold filled for most of the time but gold's still up it's 15 or 1600 a ounce so there's probably 40 or 50 bucks worth of gold filled I would gather here on top of that I got 10 carat, that's one. 10 carat, that's two. 10 carat, that's three. And again, I didn't even pay 400 for everything you see. These were in a big bag of stuff that I got. This one's not marked, but I'm gonna take a shot. I spent two bucks on it. If it's not gold, I'm fine. I'm gonna make so much money off the rest of the stuff. See if you can see it a little better there. It's an early piece. It's got a nice stone in it. I'm saying it's definitely vintage. The stone is mounted. It's not like a fake piece. So I'm going to have to test that out. I got a couple other clips of some sort. I got another pin here of some sort. Now this one looks like it could have a marking on it, but the pin, the the post on it's obliterated it. These I never worry about. They're almost never uh, us gold. This one looks gold here too. And the little circle up there is marked gold. The little... Um, I'm not sure what you want to call it, but the circle is marked, the ring, the loop is marked gold. The other piece doesn't have any markings, so it might be gold too, I'm not sure. This is marked sterling and 10K. I don't know why it says both. Uh, it's definitely heavy enough. It's got a lot of stones on it. This thing was black when I found it, so I cleaned it up with a toothbrush and some stuff in the sink. Um, I'm thinking it's sterling. Either way, it's got to be almost an ounce, so for a dollar I paid on this one here, Sterling's about $15 or so an ounce, so that one either way is good. Now, these are marked 10K, um, but I think they're really 10 karat gold because the way they're stamped, they're stamped on the inside of this cross piece, this cross piece running this way, and it looks like it might be obliterated, the rest of the GF on these two. They were just singles, too, so worst case scenario they're gold filled best case scenario they're 10 karat solid gold now i found solid gold uh cufflinks just like these not the same design but the same basic construction so i know that there's a real good chance that they're, they're they could be 10 karat gold we'll find out i'm going to take them to ed's as well too so now this stuff is usually just thrown in on a big box they weren't in a jewelry box they weren't in a jewelry section they were in little bags and stuff the markings were really hidden down in there this one it's way back in here in the back of it so i don't think they saw it so just in the jewelry wise I'm gonna do very well this is marked 10k clearly on the back as well let me see if we can get you to see that a little better these are service pins and I always look for these it has what might be diamonds on it as well so very happy with this one here's a nice pin I paid a dollar for this one real nice early one 30s or 40s would be my guess on this one I'm gonna put like 2750 to maybe 3450 and just take what I can get out of this one I usually get 15 or better bucks on something like that. Here's another nice one. I love these kind. I wish you could see the color in real life here. It's really nice and reflective here. This was a dollar. Uh, no markings on it that I could see. Um, in fact, there might be one on the pin. I didn't look at the pin. Uh, that's one of the things I always do before I list it. But either way, it's 1950s or so. This one here, I'll probably get a quick 8, 10 bucks out of it. I'm just going to blow it up there because these sell fairly quick if you price them cheap enough. Um, some other ones these aren't anything fancy but they're signed um, I can't remember the name on them 
Let me see if my loop will pull that up real quick on these. And then let me switch over. These are crements here. Um, I get these quite often. This one's got some really nice emerald colored stones. In fact, I'm not sure which way that goes. Hopefully you can see the the mass of stones and the bottom part moves on it too. Some of these are mechanical. In fact, I think it goes like that. Very a nice example of it here. There's a bird with some stones in it as well. Bird with stones. These are like 14, 15 bucks. Not a fortune on the jewelry, but the gold part I'll probably make a good eight, nine hundred bucks on. Now here's a bottle opener. It's from New Orleans. All the New Orleans stuff seems to sell extremely well. It's for an insurance company. So, you know, for 50 cents, I'll probably get 15, 20 bucks out of this. One of my favorite purchases is this one here Mighty Men and Monster Maker. It's got plates. There used to be a set like this that you could make Barbie clothing on. Let me see if I can get it out of the box. I don't care if these are complete or not. Basically, you would... In fact, let me open it up. You'd be able to create and set up pieces. You'd put a piece in here. Let's see. Here's legs for a superhero. And then you could change his top part. And then you'd pick a different head. And you'd put the head in there, put some paper in there, and then if you color over this, it creates the image onto the piece of paper, and then you can color it. So hopefully you can see the, the characters on there. I got a mummy body. Hopefully you can see the characters. These I do extremely well on. These are like 30 or 40 bucks for most of them that I find. So even if they're not complete, you can still sell these for decent money. Um, so keep an eye on these. With the box, they go for more money as well. This is something that I always look for. This was a dollar. The box is dinged up and damaged. There's a few pieces missing. It doesn't have the original um, paperwork or anything else like that, but still for a dollar, I'm very happy with that. Now again, return on this is going to be over five grand. No exaggeration whatsoever. I picked up some records as well. Now I put my price stickers on it. I've had two or three of this one here. It's Soul, Northern Soul, Ramsey Lewis, Sounds of Christmas. $14.50 right now. In season, I'd probably get 20 bucks or so for it. Maybe a little more if I market this right. Most of these are 50 cents or a dollar. One other thing you people ask me on is, what is this? Sometimes you'll see a hole through it, or I've got another one they cut off a corner or cut a divot into it. These are clearance. These are markdowns. That's all that means. Somebody took a drill through a whole stack of these and drilled it. Sometimes they drill it in the center of the record over here, and you'll see it towards the center hole, and people think it's another hole to play it or some all, all kinds of crazy things. All it means is it's a markdown. So 50 cents, I should easily get 15 or 20 bucks on this one. This one here, I've had two or three of these as well. Jungle Fantasies, Bobby Montez. This is a jazz one. 100 bucks or better on this one here. This is a Jubilee. Um, it's a fairly scarce one as well. So nice condition as you can see. Now here's a Sylvester Stallone soundtrack. This one's hit or miss on some of these. I should at least get 10 or 15 bucks. He's got a new movie out. People will put it on the wall. It's sealed, never been opened. So you can't beat that. Here's Mad Magazine. Now it's in a plastic. It really looks pretty decent. It's got inserts and things like that in it as well. Original record. It's got the original everything you want on it. It's an early pressing, so it's all original. This one I'll have to look up. I haven't had a chance to look this one up. Uh, this was the last on my list and I just didn't have time. I'm going to at least get 20 or 30 bucks out of it. Mad Magazine stuff sells very well. Black Hole, I've had probably a dozen of these. I always nab up these when I get them. Uh, the Tron one does well. Even the brand new Tron one. The disc is like mint in there. So 20, 25 bucks or better on this one here. Oh, what else we got here? Michael Jackson's Thriller. Now, I've cleaned this up a little bit. $37.50 to, say, $40, $45 is what I should get. It's got the original liner notes. It's got the original inner sleeve. It's like in mint condition. I've sold three or four of these recently, so I know I'll get some money out of it. 
here's a $40 Frank Zappa Joe's Garage. Now, I talked about markdowns. This is another clearance record. They just chopped off a corner so they could instantly tell it was a clearance. Sealed, never been opened. I've had two of these now that have been sealed like this. So around here, sometimes you'll get dumped off stuff at record shops, and they show up like that. Here's another one. This is worth about 40 bucks. This is The Crazy World of Arthur Brown. If you don't know the song Fire, look it up. Type in Arthur Brown and Fire, and you'll recognize the song, I would imagine. This is a tour book. Um, I don't think I've had one of these for about a year. Um, these do show up. They're usually mixed up in records. This is actually a tour book from Blind Faith. Uh, for visual things is what it's called. Um, it, this one does show up. You'll see them. Average price on one of these is about 100 bucks. I paid $0.50 cents for this one as a record. They thought it was a record. They didn't even look at it. It's the exact size of a record. It fits in a record thing. They show up sometimes in bookshelves, too. So 100 bucks. Gospel Truth That's. These show up around here fairly often. 40 bucks. Another Truth That's. 40 bucks. Here's Animals by Pink Floyd. Original, first pressing. It has the original inner sleeve on it. This one I always get about 30 bucks for right off the bat. It's in mint condition. Here's another one that I've had probably about 8 or 10 of these in the last 3 or so years. I scour records. Sometimes I can look at five or 6,000 records in a week. Uh, or sometimes I buy 10,000 in the same week. It just depends. This is George Harrison's All Things Must Come to Pass. This has most everything in it. Um, Multicolored sleeves, the original Apple, as you can see. Nice example. 125 bucks or thereabouts in this one here. Uh, so again, going to estate sales is a huge, huge plus for us. I might film the gold scrapping again when I'm at Ed's. It just depends on how much time we have. But you can see that this is just small stuff. This is enough to fit in a box or two in the back seat of my car. I'm walking out with thousands of dollars for less than $400 investment. You have to know something. I, I carry a loop with me everywhere I go. I've got a lighted one that I carry as well. The jewelry is, is a big plus to it. You know, Even though it's, it's gold filled, I still make good money off of gold filled because gold is up right now. So... You know, $800, $900 in gold. So it all adds up at the end of the day. You piece them out. You spend 5 or 10 bucks on some records. There's $100 records in here. So, you know, it's at least $800 on the records. Now, this is just from a few hours of sourcing at two estate sales. I wasn't the first one there. You see the stuff I got. It's not super, super spectacular in most people's eyes. The die cuts were the best thing I got all week from one single purchase, that is. All together, I'm going to make a ton of money just off the die cut. So, you know, you're looking at, as I said, 5000 plus return on my investment. Now, how much you make depends on your sourcing abilities and your abilities to track and figure out what stuff is. A lot of people just don't know a lot of what I'm looking at or what I personally buy. Records, I'm very good on. I know my records. So this was an easy haul for the records. The die cuts, the same thing. The Christmas manger pieces, I've had dozens and dozens of these. When they're plastic, most people just think they're junk and throw them in bins for almost nothing. So I really square on that. Costume jewelry, as you saw, I do very well on. Everything here should be easy sells. Nothing should be sitting around for very long. The gold, I'll get all my money back, probably double it the minute I take my gold in. And the rest of this is all gravy, including the Victorian die cuts. So hopefully that gave you some thought on this. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.